Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to create SharePoint like views in Power Apps. We will create these dynamic views directly inside the Power App, decide which columns to show and hide, and apply filters specific to a view. So let's get started. My use case here is a simple Power App that is connected to a SharePoint list. The list is a work progress tracking list that has information about the work item, category progress, and some other metadata associated with the work item. Now in SharePoint, we have the option of views. So in this case, the view is showcasing all the items in this list. And here I can change the view. So show me all the items that are currently assigned to me. So in a view, I can apply filter logic plus I can even show and hide columns in a specific view. So for this view, since it's assigned to me, all the tasks would be on my name. So I can just go and hide this column and I can create multiple views. However, in Power Apps, when you're connecting to SharePoint, there is no option for us to leverage those views. But there are numerous scenarios in which we would like to create a similar experience for our users. So here in my app, I have already connected to that same work progress tracker SharePoint list. And I have created a drop down control here of the different views that I would like to provide for my users of the app. So right now the view is all the tasks. So it is showcasing all the tasks. I can switch this around to tasks assigned to me. The view has changed. The columns have changed as well as a filter criteria has been applied. And I have another option here for overdue tasks, which will showcase all my tasks that are overdue. So let's see how we can quickly set up our own views inside the app. So I'm starting with a clean slate and here I will first go and insert a data table. Now you can leverage a gallery as well to replicate this scenario, but it would be more work. It's a lot easier with a data table. And my data table, I will connect it to my SharePoint list. It will plug in the columns from my SharePoint list right here. In the properties, if I go to edit fields, I can reorder these columns. I can add additional fields. And each of these columns in my data table have specific properties associated with it. Now, in order for me to create views here, I would need to provide the user with an option like a drop down wherein they can select the view and accordingly the columns in my data table will show and hide. So to do so on the app object, if I head over to the on start function, this is where I can go ahead and create a collection of all those views. So I'll write a simple formula here, clear collect. I'll give my collection a name. So collection of views. And here I can start adding my view information. So I'll add a property called view name, put a colon and give the name of my view. So I'll give a name to my first view, which is all tasks. And here I would like to define the columns that I would like to show as part of the view. And I will call this view columns. And because I want to add multiple columns per view, I'm going to add this as an array. I'm going to open square brackets and within this is where I will plug in the display names of my columns from SharePoint. So let's say for my first view, I would like to show the title, comma, description, priority, due date, assigned to. And all of these names are just the display names of my columns. Now, once I've completed this, I will complete the item by closing the curly braces. And now if I close this function, this completes my collection of views. I can click on format text. So it'll format this formula. And now I can add additional views right here in this collection. And the way I can do that is I can literally just copy this, put a comma and add my next view. Just paste it right here. I'll call this my tasks. And here, because I'm showcasing all the tasks that are assigned to me, I don't need assigned to. So I'm going to remove assigned to. 
maybe I don't want to show the description as part of this view. So I'll remove that column as well. So I have a couple of views here and I'll add a third one. I'll call this my overdue tasks and I've selected the columns that I would like to showcase as part of this view. Once I have this collection defined, because I am in the edit experience of my Power App, I will right click this and run my task so that this collection gets loaded. When you publish this app and the users access this app, OnStart will be the first function to get called and automatically my collection would be loaded. You can even get all of this data from a configuration list, maybe in SharePoint itself. So you can make it even more dynamic. The key is that all of these columns that I'm defining here in my views have to be a part of my data table beforehand. Now, once this setup is complete in my home screen here, I will insert a label, call it view, and I will insert a drop down control. And for the items property of this drop down control, I will use the collection of views. And here it's showcasing me the view names. And we can see that in the value property for this drop down, it is connected to the view name property that we created in that collection. So if I preview the app, I get all those views right here. However, nothing is happening in my data table right now because we need to connect the two. So how do I show only those columns that are a part of the view? So for that, for my data table, I will go ahead and click on a single column. And if I do control A, it will select all the columns. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to apply the formula once for all of these columns. I will search for the visible property. The visible by default is true. All the columns are being showcased, but I'm going to change this now. I will change this to self dot field display name. Now self refers to the same control and field display name gives me the display name of the field in my data source. Now that I have the name of the field, all I have to do is check to see if it exists in the view columns property of the selected item in this dropdown control. So my formula will be self dot display name is in the name of your dropdown control dot selected dot and here I get those properties of my collection that I had created and my view columns was the array of the columns and because it's an array that's why I'm using the in function to check to see if this display name of the column is in that array. And this array is coming from the selected value of my dropdown, which is nothing but my view names. Now, if I go and preview the app, observe how the columns are showing and hiding depending upon the view selection. All tasks view has the following columns. If I change it to my tasks, I only see three columns. That's how we set up the array. Now for the my tasks view, if I would like to add the description column, I will head over to the app object and on the on start function where I created that collection for my tasks. I will just add description right here. And because I'm in the edit mode of the app, I'll have to ensure I run this so that the collection reloads. I will click preview. And this time if I switch to my tasks, I can see the description column being a part of my view. So that's how easily we can create views and show and hide columns from our data table. Now next, we would also like to add filters. We would like to filter the data based on the view. So if I select all tasks, it should show me all the tasks in the system. But if I select my tasks, it should only show the tasks that are assigned to me. Now under all tasks, the current logged in user, which is me, Reza, I have three tasks that are assigned to me. So my tasks should only show those three rows. In order for us to add that filter logic on the data table for the items property, we will add a simple switch function and then based on the name of the view, apply the respective filter formula. So switch my dropdown control dot selected dot view name. 
if the view name matches my tasks in that case i would like to apply a filter condition that gets data from my data source which is my sharepoint list where assigned to and i need to ensure i pick my column because it's a person type column i can put a dot and select the email is equal to to get the current logged in user's email i can use a simple function user.email and this completes my first switch case and let's say the default case right now i will just set it to my sharepoint list and i will close my function now if i preview my app when i select my tasks observe how it is filtering the data to only show the tasks that are associated to me as the current logged in user i have three tasks i see those right here if i switch to all tasks i get all task information so there's filtering going on plus the columns are also changing depending upon the view selection let's create a view that shows me all my tasks that are overdue now here overdue meaning they have passed the due date now i am recording this video as of the 25th of june that's the current date now here looking at the data table there is no visual indicator that showcases that these specific tasks are overdue now one of the limitations of a data table is you cannot apply formatting to it so if i select a field in a data table and if i go to advanced you will note that there are very few properties that we can play with the only property here that we can truly leverage is the text property so if we look at the text property here it is this item dot due date and this is where i can write a very simple formula to change the text and add emojis to provide the visual indicator so here i can check to see if this item dot due date is less than today's date that means the task is overdue so i would like to show a red circle indicator so you can just go and grab an emoji from the web so i've just googled red circle emoji here is the emoji control c i will head back to my power app and right here under double quotes i will paste it right here i'll put a comma if the task is not overdue in that case i will place a green circle emoji and now if i just close this function you will see how it puts those emojis there based on whether the due date is crossed or not and here i can also append text put a space put an ampersand this item dot due date so it will put the actual date there so a very simple formula and here now it adds a visual appeal or a visual indicator to the user that these tasks are overdue now when the user selects my overdue tasks i would like to show them only their tasks that are overdue so for that i will head back to my data table i've clicked on format text for the items property after the my tasks switch case i'll add another one called my overdue tasks that's the exact name i gave here i will apply my filter formula that says filter my list where the task is assigned to me same formula as before and the due date is less than today and i will close the filter function put a comma and this completes my switch function if i preview the app now we can see that the my overdue tasks view is showcasing only those tasks that are assigned to me as the logged in user and other ones that are overdue if i go to my tasks i see i have three tasks two of them were the overdue ones and if i switch over to all tasks i can see all the tasks that have been created by all the users and let's try and now access this app from a different user to see how the views are truly working in action so here's a user sarah who's signing in to that same power app sarah can see all the views if sarah changes it to my tasks then sarah can only see the tasks that are assigned to her if she changes it to my overdue tasks there are no tasks that are assigned to sarah and that are overdue 
You can even add security in which these views will only show up for specific users. So if I'm an admin of the application, I get the all tasks view. If I'm not, then I only get the my tasks view. And that logic you can incorporate right here when you're creating the collection of views. So you can check if the user is an admin. If yes, then only add this specific view to that collection. Many scenarios, many use cases. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.